I think we constantly need to sometimes be reminded what life is about, why, why certain things are so good and what to appreciate and what not to take for granted and who we are, not to lose touch with that because it happens to all of us, to the best of us. And to be reminded, that's Will. I'm going to have a heart attack, but that's what I was gonna say. With striking beauty, graceful elegance, and inner confidence, Charlize Theron is the South African farm girl who became a silver screen icon. You got discovered in a bank while having a, a, a meltdown? Yes. Is that true? That's, yeah, that's an old story. Okay. <laughs> but behind the pretty face is a woman of immense talent who demands to be taken seriously. Charlize is stunning. She's a statuesque beauty, so easy on the eyes. He's doing a, a countdown of the hottest blondes in Hollywood, and you're on the list. I should hope so. Do you have any so. reaction? <laughs> <laughs> She's oh, hungry. Wow. I don't know how to yeah, respond to that. What do you say to that? that, you know? Well, thank you very much, Eve. <laughs> Thanks. Charlize has won every major award for acting, but no matter what, people are still going to be hung up on her looks. How does it feel working with Esquire's sexiest woman alive? Finally, Did you guys know you that? that? I was wondering, really? when were you going to get to that question? I wanted to I bring mean, it out in the beginning. Seriously getting upset. You really can't blame people for focusing on her beauty when she's strutting down, you know, the carpet in a beautiful dress. <laughs> Whose dress? It's Tom Ford for Gucci and show party earrings. This is a Dior. It's a divide. It's divide. She's able to carry off those incredible gowns, but she's also at home and comfortable in a t-shirt and a pair of jeans. I'm very much a jeans and t-shirt kind of girl, and I don't really like shoes. I like flip-flops. Yeah, I mean, I don't wait. I don't I run out with my hair wet and throw in some foundation, and that's about it. I mean, I'm not, I don't, I get to do this so much that I really feel like a princess most of my life. So I kind of long for the moments where I don't feel like a princess and I can get a little dirtier. She definitely downplays how fashionable and glamorous she can be in interviews. She tends to deflect questions about fashion and beauty. It's not something that she wants to define her. What are you wearing on? Why I'm wearing clothes, because apparently it's a thing to do in this society. Have you thought of anything in particular that you like out there in terms of swimsuit fashion or what are you going to wear for the summer or anything like that? Yes, I have it all scheduled in my notebook and I don't have my, my notebook on me right now. Could we, could we get my notebook? You really, you're just joking with me. Right? <laughs> Is it true that you were going to star in Showgirls? <laughs> yeah, I was just starting out. I would have done anything. I mean, I was I didn't walk into Hollywood and think I was going to, you know, do The English Patient as my first part. I was ready to I was ready to pay my dues, definitely. Early on in her career, Charlize often found herself as the love interest in a movie or the male's conquest in a film because she was so good looking. You take a lot of roles where you're surrounded by men. Yeah. Why do you think that is? God, it's so many things. It's just very rarely that you get a script with two women in it or just a, a woman in it. Right. And, and most of the time you do have to kind of try and find a true character that's not just, you know, wallflower. Playing the girlfriend role can really be great for your career, especially when you're playing with some of Hollywood's biggest players, you know, opposite Keanu Reeves or Al Pacino or Johnny Depp. But you also run the risk of being overshadowed by their sheer stardom. Did you enjoy working with Al Pacino? Yes. Yes, I really did. Uh, as your camera's not on me anymore. <laughs> yes, I enjoyed working with the whole cast. I think the cast is incredible. Though she might be overlooked uh, in some of these films, when you share the screen with someone like Al Pacino, you can't help but grow as an actress. That's the greatest gift that I feel that I walked away with was watching they gave me the gift of observing. And that's something that you can't get in any class or any book. That's getting it from the best teachers out there. Johnny's name came up and I went, no matter what, just you have to get him. And it just, it was an amazing experience because 
he is the kind of actor, he keeps you on your toes, he challenges you. Even when she was just playing a girlfriend, she brought her talent to it, and she made each role this living, breathing person. Clearly that strategy paid off because Hollywood players soon began to take notice and she started to get better roles. I just had a hunch about her that she was more talented than, than had been, uh, she'd been given a chance to show, and I know what that feels like when people cast you for your looks and not what they think you can bring to a role, so I was excited about offering that to her. It was one of those projects that I'm sure every single female just, they would have been idiots if they didn't because the script was so good and the writing for her, the material for her character was just there. It was challenging. It was somebody, you know, giving a, a woman a chance to really have a mouth, you know, especially in the 20s, which I love. It's all about the work in my book. If you deliver on the work and if you challenge yourself, people will be challenged and they might just go and see your movie. I've been dying to have an opportunity like this where I could really prove myself as an actor and, right. and be challenged by a director and by a script and material. I think Monster completely changed the way people viewed Charlize Theron as an actress. Here's someone who's so beautiful and then they're in this movie playing a serial killer and she looks unrecognizable. Remove the looks from the equation, then really all you have to be judged by is your talent. I've never been one of those actors that, that looks the exact same way in every single movie, and I do that for a reason, because I, I, I want to emerge, emerge into the character completely. And so for me, it's really, truly, in every aspect, getting under the skin of the character. And if it means you have to gain weight or lose weight or whatever, I mean, that's part of the job. That's why I do this. That's why I love this. Every once in a while during award season in Hollywood, you get that one actor or actress with that one career-defining role, and they sweep the awards. And Charlize, for her, that was monster. Charlize truly proved once and for all she was a lot more than eye candy, and she got a whole new level of respect from Hollywood. The fact that that's happened for me, and it's taken this long, um, for me, it feels like I have won. Thank you. Oh, there you go. This belongs to oh, you. Sorry. It was my honor. My honor, you See you later. Thank you. Oh, my God, Serpy. You earned it. You've signed up. I know, I know, I know. I know. How is that, right? <sighs> well, these things are supposed to be fun, but it's probably a little more fun when you win. I can't think right now. This <laughs> is so. It's, where are we? Charlize Theron has proven that her talent is even more striking than her beauty. But with high praise comes high expectations. It's already so much pressure. I mean, I feel like I'm under a... I just feel like there's so many eyes on me. How has Theron managed to succeed on her own terms under the glare of intense media scrutiny? I think I've always known this, that you just, you can't please everybody. There's no way that you're gonna have everybody like what you do, whether you've won an Oscar or not. I mean, it's just, there is no guarantee. So at the end of the day, you have to make decisions based on, on what you think is, is, is gonna push you forward as an actor and be exciting for you. I think it's, it has to be a private and personal decision always. This is the only way to kind of deal with it if it is a failure, to go, well, it was something that I really wanted to do. After winning every major award for her role in Monster, Charlize Theron proved she belongs among Hollywood's elite. They always thought if it did happen, it would be a really nice surprise. But the work has always been so satisfying. This is amazing, but you can't expect these kind of things. But in an extremely demanding industry, in the face of impossible expectations, how has Theron managed to succeed on her own terms? Being the Oscar winner, what do you do with those two words? Um, you feel honored and very um, grateful, um, but I don't want to get caught in this corner where I, there's, it's already so much pressure. I mean, I feel like I'm under a, I just feel like there's so many eyes on me and I don't want to get to that place where I start to feel like I'm making choices for other people. In the years 
since Monster, Charlize has continued to take a few roles that have really downplayed her beauty and her feminine side. People sort of start to suggest, well, perhaps she needs that transformation because she can't do the nuance, she can't do the subtlety. You don't even realize it's you on screen. Do you like playing those type of roles where you don't- I'm gonna tell you the irony right now. The irony is that this is the transformation. People don't understand that, you know? And I think you can ask any woman in this industry. We are incredibly blessed to have 4,000 people in a back room, you know, spatuling us with makeup and making our hair look gorgeous and putting us in gorgeous clothes and making us, I think that's what people are almost sometimes forgetting. People call out Charlize Theron for dressing down for a lot of her more serious roles, but then when she glams it up and looks so beautiful for more mainstream films like Eon Flux or Hancock, then they say it's beneath her. She kind of can't win. I think a lot of people forget the kind of work that goes into these kind of movies. It's very easy for people to kind of go, oh, you know, and, and not realize that it is a completely different animal and you can't compare a dramatic character to this world, but at the same time, they're, they're just as challenging. So much is made, of course, of the roles that actors choose to take and how they roll out their career, but for someone like Charlize, she doesn't care about necessarily getting another Oscar nomination or having box office success. I've never really thought of, uh, well, now I want to do this, and now I want to do this. I just, I think it's extremely hard to try and even choreograph anything like that in this business. I just want to be challenged. That's really the bottom line. How did you get yourself, especially during the labor scene, how did you get yourself there? I was actually really challenged by that scene because the director, when we started talking about me playing this role, he. On one, I, we were having one conversation. He said, "Oh, and by the way, I have this thing that I want to do with the birthing scene, where I, I'm going to send our sound guy um, to go and actually record real women in, in labor, and I'm going to sound mix it in over your scene." And I went, "What?" You know, it was kind of like this. The old, it was like, "No, I can do this," you know. And so, of course, on the day. Um, I just, you know, went for it, and then, like, I didn't have a voice for, like, <laughs> four days. So I completely, like, busted a vocal cord just to prove him wrong. As a woman, a beautiful blonde to stand out from the crowd, you're gonna have to elbow your way in. Right from the beginning, everybody treated me like the girl, and that women are just automatically horrible drivers, because I got this schedule sent to my house that said I had to go to, like, six weeks of driving school instead of the boys just going for three weeks. So. Right from the beginning, it was kind of like a, I, there's no way that I'm going to let them think, because that's just not how it is. Women are great drivers. So we were just constantly waiting for somebody to do something wussy or be scared or throw up. Jason and I got out of our cars, and Mark was just nowhere to be found. And we were like, where's Mark? I called him, and he was in his car. I don't feel well. I think I ate something. <laughs> it's like, you're such a wuss! Do you both feel that you've realized your potential, far exceeded what you ever thought you would do, or...? Oh, God, definitely. I... I you, you have to understand that I, I come from the other side of the world, you know, and I grew up in a really small town, a farm community, where... I didn't even know about Hollywood. I just, I was introduced to movies and fell in love. I was never aware of the star, the fact. I thought Tom Hanks was like a guy that lived next to like maybe us and his job just by chance was making movies. I was never really aware of the Oscars. So I never saw these people other than in films and I never knew that they were like, you know, being paid millions of dollars and you know, that everybody knew who they were. The fact that Charlize didn't even really know what celebrities were when she was growing up is probably a main reason why she's able to be so grounded and so normal. She really just wants to take on projects that mean something to her. I know you have a producer credit in the movie as well. How much of a say did you have along with Nick in how it was produced and how it was done? Did you have a huge part? Do you feel you did? Well, I wouldn't take the credit if I wasn't producing it. I mean, I'm not in it for the vanity sake of it. I, I have had a production company for five years now and have done a lot of development. Charlize is now at a place in her career where she can use the success that she's had at the box office to go off and tell some really interesting and important stories. 
I like the idea of taking something like this project that kind of just came to me, something that I thought was really great and knew would have a, a rough time getting financing, and and I was really there from 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 the conception of it. And um, you know, I, I flew up to Saskatchewan where we finally decided to shoot, and I spent six weeks there before any of these guys show up, just doing pre-production and finding locations with our director. I'm fascinated by the process of kind of putting all of those elements together and then kind of delivering this little baby. Whether Charlize is acting or producing, she's really stayed true to who she is and stayed true to herself. And that's really rare in this business. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlize Theron. I'm incredibly humbled and honored to be here today. You've made a foreign farm girl from South Africa feel very much at home, and this is my home now. I had big dreams, but this is really just unbelievable, and um, I feel so incredibly honored because I get to do something that I love so unbelievably much. I can't imagine doing anything else. Thank you so much, you guys, really, thank you. Never one to compromise, Charlize Theron has achieved tremendous success by staying true to herself. But living a movie star life can sometimes be a mixed blessing. If you ever get used to it, you're just not human. The reason I'm, I'm probably throwing these, these sort of questions at you is because I'm catching you in your first publicity spot. Yes. I mean, where do you want to see? Five years from now, we will not speak to you. <laughs> God knows I've seen it happen, and God help you if it does. <laughs> it's like, what, what do you want to, I mean, that's looking back. Looking forward, what do you see? What do you want? What do you want to do? Looking back, I see the valley. Looking forward, I see a camera. So it looks like I'm going to be looking at a camera for the next couple of years, if they let me. From humble beginnings, Charlize Theron has established herself as one of Tinseltown's most beloved and gifted actors. But in the face of overwhelming fame, how does this South African farm girl remain level-headed while continuing to make her mark on Hollywood? My name is too hard to remember, so I think people will never have the guts to come up to me and say, that's Charlize Theron. I think we have to remember where Charlize came from. She truly did come from a little small community in South Africa. So you can imagine that paparazzi must still seem so crazy and foreign to her. What's the best and worst part of being an actress, being Charlize Theron in your job? There really is no 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 downside of, of being an actor. There really, really isn't. But, you know, for me, the, where we're going with the whole celebrity thing has become very uncomfortable. And that would, I would say, would be the downside. Hard to get used to that, right? If you ever get used to it, you're just not human. Then, then I believe we have been infiltrated by Mars, for sure. <laughs> she's certainly not somebody who's traded on her personal life and her personal relationships. I think she's a very private person. You know when it's uh, uh, 7 o'clock in the morning and you're at the airport with uh, zit cream on your face and, and baggy jeans and a dirty t-shirt and you have uh, 10 people following you into the plane? Of course, that's not very pleasant. Um, but, you know, it's. I think you realize that when you do this, that that's part of the job and to a certain <sighs> There's a part of you that truly belongs to them out there, but if you, I, I, I do believe that there's a way to maybe keep a part, that, that private part, to yourself, and, and if you do that, I think you'll be okay. I think of people who bought these magazines, spend one day in our lives, and felt what it felt like to have somebody chase you around all day and stalk you and and peer in your windows and not only, you know, follow you, but follow your friends and follow your family, I think they would feel a little different about it. You know, I, I think laughter and life and, and being present in your life is much more than just your job. It's, it's so great to go and do that and then go home and have something completely different and have people in your life that that don't want to talk about it, but, you know, maybe want to talk about more important things or, or not, or silly things or laugh. So it's really not that hard for me. I mean, I go to my trailer, I take my clothes off, and 
I'm me. I mean, I'm me when I make the movie. I'm not one of those actors who are like, I'm Emily right now. <laughs> Don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Don't look at me, I'm a detective. She takes the roles seriously, but she doesn't seem to take herself seriously. Aside from outer beauty, she has this amazing inner beauty. She has this fantastic sense of humor, and people just really gravitate towards her. <laughs> I danced for you quite a bit. She danced a lot. We all right with the sound outside? Shut up! Little shoot em up, little shoot em up. Little... Charlie's just. No, I have to go to the bathroom. Oh. Sorry. Are you right about my breast reduction? <laughs> that happens one more time! I got drunk. It's my damn interview. I'm gonna be so upset if I don't win. Right. I'm gonna show these people what a tantrum is. I'm, like spat, like sh projectiled out of my mouth, and I choked on. Sorry. I think her sense of humor helps in her career, not only with acting, but also with producing. I mean, who wouldn't want to work on a project with someone that you know you're going to have a good time with? What did you learn from working with Charlize here? Oh, boy. And she's right next to you. So I learned how to smoke. Oh. Oh, <laughs> damn. I'm going to be over here <laughs> getting a drink. I'm just kidding. The smoking thing, let me just clear it up, <laughs> is because her character had to smoke yeah. in the movie, and... Her parents gave me the green light to take her out one night and to teach her how to smoke a herbal cigarette or herbal. She's terrific. She was there hands on the whole time. And uh, when we were freezing cold, she was giving us extra long underwear. <laughs> and uh, she was taking care of us like a mother and like a really creative producer. Charlize has so much to accomplish in her future, and she will accomplish it. She's very headstrong. She's passionate. I think Charlize is going to have a long career in Hollywood. I don't even think we've seen the best of what's to come from her yet. I, I never try and set out to kind of follow any kind of, you know, theory or, or, or recipe, you know, well, I've done this, now I have to go and do that. You know, at the end of the day, for me, it's about storytelling. You can look at anybody's body of work and say, well, there's all these correlations, and for me, it's not about the size of the role. It's about leaving something behind that you really believe in. And when you dedicate yourself to something, it better be something that you really like and something that you really feel is worth leaving behind.